Hey everyone, this is Josh with another Bitcoin and blockchain tutorial available at chaintuts.com. And for today's tutorial, we're going to be discussing address encoding formats. So when you use a cryptocurrency to send funds to somebody else, you send those funds to their public address. And if you're not familiar much with cryptocurrencies, this address might just look like a random string of garbage. It's just numbers and letters that don't seem to mean much. And uh, we're going to talk today about how those addresses are actually derived and what encoding formats are used to uh, create the final string of letters and numbers that you see uh, in your wallet. So first, we're going to talk about the really common base 58 check encoding scheme. So this is the original encoding address scheme that came out with Bitcoin and it's commonly used with Litecoin as well and uh, for Bitcoin Cash legacy addresses. However, Bitcoin Cash does commonly use a new encoding format that we're going to get to later in the tutorial. So base 58 encoding starts out with a raw public key hash. So when you create an address in Bitcoin, you don't just use the raw public key that uh, is derived from your private key that unlocks your funds. First, the raw public key is actually run through a double hashing algorithm. So it's run through SHA-256 and then RIPEMD-160 to give us a final 160-bit or 20-byte public key hash. We add to the front of that public key hash a version byte. So it's one byte of information or eight bits. And for Bitcoin, that's usually 0x0 in hexadecimal for legacy addresses. So when you see the final encoded address, these are those Bitcoin addresses that start with the number one. For Litecoin, the uh, 0x3 uh, address version byte gives you that L that you see at the beginning of the address. There are other ones as well. So if you've ever used a SegWit uh, base 58 address in Bitcoin or a multi-sig address, those are the ones that the final encoding starts with the number three. Now at the end of the address, we actually have a 32-bit or four-byte double SHA checksum. So what this checksum is, is it's the version byte plus the raw pub key hash run through SHA-56 twice. And a couple bytes of that is uh, taken off of the front of the hash and appended to the end of the address. And what this does is it allows wallets to detect if there was an error typing in the rest of the information. So if you mistype a character somewhere in the middle of the address, the checksum isn't going to match and the wallet will let you know that your address isn't valid. So once you have the final uh, raw address that has the version bit, the raw pub key hash and the SHA-256 checksum, what you do is you run that through a base 58 encoding. So base 58 is a uh, number system kind of just like base 10 is. So in our day-to-day -day lives, we're used to doing math with numbers that have zero through nine as the digits. Well, base 58 is uh, one through nine and a couple of uh, alphanumeric characters as well, both capital and lowercase. So this is similar to base 64, which is used pretty commonly in computer science. But what Satoshi did when he developed this system is he removed some characters that are really, really hard to distinguish when written down or read. So for example, there's no uh, lowercase l, there's no capital I in base 58 check because that would make it really difficult to distinguish those characters in the addresses. As well, there's no zero. Uh, there's only a lowercase o, there's no uppercase o as well. Because those characters are just too hard to tell apart depending on somebody's handwriting or maybe the font that's being used. And I think that's a really ingenious way of dealing uh, with the sort of reading and writing problem that you have. Now, the next sort of uh, class of encoding schemes is base32 based uh, address encoding. So this is most commonly seen with Bitcoin Cash's cash adder format, as well as batch 32 addresses uh, used in the main Bitcoin chain. So this again starts with a raw pub key hash, and there is a version byte appended to the front. Now there's a specification for the version byte uh, that's in the cache adder spec, and if you look at the written article for this tutorial, you can find a link to that spec as well. 
there's a couple of different things going on with the various bits in that one byte uh, that determine what the version byte actually means. And at the end, there's what's called a BCH code that is used as a checksum. Now this BCH is not the uh, ticker symbol for Bitcoin Cash. It actually stands for uh, the last names of some of the mathematicians that developed this scheme. And so this is another type of checksum that does error detection and allows a wallet to tell if you've typed in part of the address wrong. Now a nice thing about base32 is there's no capital letters. So with base32 addresses, you uh, generally see them as lowercase and there's no need to distinguish between, for example, an uppercase W or a lowercase W. That's generally a fairly easy thing to do when you're dealing with fonts, but with handwriting it can get difficult. And Base32 based encoding systems solve that problem. Now the final commonly seen address encoding format is what's called hexadecimal or Base16. This is actually a very common way to encode data in computer science and programming well outside the realm of cryptocurrency. This is an encoding scheme that's been around for a long time. However, when it comes to cryptocurrencies, uh, the Ethereum developers decided this was the system that they wanted to use. So any Ethereum address that you see is going to be encoded in base 16. With ETH addresses, there is no version bytes or checksum, usually. Uh, and I say usually because the original Ethereum addresses had no checksum at all. And so you could use uh, all capital letters or all lowercase letters, it didn't matter, and it didn't mean anything. However, there is a newer uh, checksum scheme that has come out which uses a mix of capital and lowercase hex letters, and we're not going to cover that in this tutorial today. So the big advantage to hexadecimal encoding is it's simple. You only use the characters, the digits 0 through 9, and then letters A through F. So there's only 16 characters to deal with, and they're all very easy to distinguish uh, from each other whether you're talking about fonts or whether you're talking about handwriting. The big disadvantage is these addresses are very verbose. They're long. Uh, something like base 58 check can compress a lot of uh, actual binary data into a string of letters and numbers that's not very long considering the amount of data that is contained within. However, with hexadecimal, for every one byte of information, you actually end up with two hexadecimal characters. So uh, for something like an Ethereum address where you use um, 160 bits of information, that's 20 bytes, you actually end up with a 40 character address. And that's a lot to deal with if you're writing things down or you know, uh, you know, reading from a piece of paper where it's written down, but it's generally not an issue for copy and pasting addresses on a PC. So, these are all of the most common ways to encode cryptocurrency addresses. And the big reason that we do encoding in the first place is because human beings are computers. Us uh, meatbags, as you might call us, we're not very good at dealing with binary information. We like things like letters and numbers, and we like things to be short and simple. So we take what would be 160 bits of information, 160 ones and zeros, or on and off switches, and we encode that to something that's much shorter and easier for us as people to read, write, copy, paste, that sort of thing. Uh, it's just simply much visually easier for people to deal with. And so each of these address encoding schemes has its own pros and cons. Again, that generally comes down to the verbosity of the address, so is it really long and takes a long time to read and write, uh, versus compactness, and then are there things like error detection, uh, how hard is it to distinguish between the characters used, and that sort of thing. So as always, thank you very much for listening to this tutorial. And there is an article that accompanies this tutorial on the website where you can see samples of these addresses and uh, find links to some of the specifications as well.